pilot director, Alan Coulter, and our production designer, Kevin McWillan, worked extensively in an area to create a kind of a naturalism. So we wanted to use a lot of natural woods. We wanted to have a lot of greenery in the world. We believe nature's going to exist in the inner spaces much more than it does now. We wanted to really show a world where nature is preserved and treasured. So you'll see that it's not a very synthetic future. There's no way to really prepare yourself for that moment. You've thought this thing up, you've dreamed it into existence, you put it on the page, and these other really talented people take it and make it manifest. And then you walk onto a stage and you're standing inside your imagination, in a way. And so it's one of my favorite things to do now, I was just thinking of this this morning. I was on set, we were shooting, and I kind of snuck off to write a few pages. And it's one of my greatest joys is to sit on the set in the characters' environments and to write the scripts for them. We didn't want to stamp exact date because we wanted to have a feeling that this future is close. It's not far. And we also wanted to have a feeling that things can happen tomorrow. You know, something extremely unusual in, in a world of science, in a world of our knowing the universe can happen literally tomorrow. When we started out, we determined that it was going to be about 40, 50 years from now. So today, Molly would be five years old. So the idea was that as she grew up, became an adult, she and John would have carried some of the things that they had as children into their life 40 years from now. And there's a big, huge photo of the lake in the background, and then there's actually a real house in Pasadena that the photo is taken from. So when we go to shoot the exterior of the backyard, we actually use that home in Pasadena, which is beautiful. It's just situated on the lake, surrounded with the trees. Before John got financing, he's been working in this garage, and it's pretty much like a Pinocchio shop. It's like a little tiny shop that he's been doing all this work, because obviously he doesn't have a lot of money. Welcome to our new home. The first thing that hit me when I read about Humanics was that it was some kind of circular 360 degree environment where there were things happening all around. From your garage to that windowless wonder of a warehouse to this. And I also wanted an environment where it felt extremely contemporary, you know, but very simple, almost like an Apple product, just something that was super graphic and not too fussy in detail. My role is Hideki Yasumoto, Japanese born. He's a kind of billionaire. Um, he has a little mysterious past, but now he's owner of the Yasumoto Corporation, living a great luxury apartment. When I first saw the set, when I first saw my office and living room, I was surprised, of course, but it was a great surprise. It was a nice mixture between East and West, and classic and modern, so great balance and, and yeah, inspired me a lot. You must be Molly. Mr. Yasumoto. He succeeded in U.S., maybe most successful person in the world, powerful, but he always thinking about his past, he always thinking about where did I come from. So when I saw the set, I, I felt deeply that, that kind of thing that's very important for my character. Given his cultural background, you know, of course we wanted to reflect his history and we felt that Yasumoto is one of those people who would have an absolutely priceless collection of things, just one of a kind. And so that's where the dinosaur skull comes from, and the samurai armor. And if you notice on one wall, there's a very large portrait of a samurai who is actually Yasumoto when he was in his 20s. And so the idea there is that he may be 200 years old in our story, but he appears to be in his 40s.